You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, more good news. Uh, just gets better. <laughs> Still, without most of the entire world even knowing that we're on the Internet, last night we placed number one radio talk show. This is number one radio talk show out of 2,465 stations all broadcasting during this primetime slot on the Shoutcast, which is the premier place to go listen to radio. There's none better. And uh, we were number one radio talk program last night. Out of all of the different uh, categories of broadcasting uh, programs, we were number seven. And the only ones that uh, beat us, number one through six, were all music programs. All music. There's some uh, hip-hop and uh, a very popular 80s uh, music uh, uh, station that just plays the best from the 80s. And apparently that's very popular. Because that's uh, generally, from what I hear, and, I, and I'm just hearing this from the people who run this stuff, uh, because the first time I ever heard the Hour of the Time on radio was last night after the broadcast. I went to hear what they were playing afterwards, and I don't ever remember even making that show, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Uh, <clears throat> but I did. That was me on there talking, without any doubt. But it had to have been from 1992. And uh, then after that was over, they played another one from 1992, the uh, Bill Dugan the show I did with Bill Dugan, it was the first time anybody in the world ever heard the proper argument for opposing the FCC, which is jurisdiction only. All these other arguments, <laughs> forget it. You can't go into court and plead freedom of speech against the FCC. <laughs> you have to plead jurisdiction. And you have to be an intrastate broadcaster. You can be an intrastate commercial broadcaster as long as your, your uh, programming doesn't go over the state line. Or you can be an interstate commercial broadcaster. <clears throat> um, you know, as long as your program doesn't go over the state line. If it does, you can't be commercial. Because the uh, FCC only has the constitutional authority and jurisdiction over interstate and international commercial broadcasting. So if your broadcast crosses the state line, it cannot be commercial. If your uh, broadcast is commercial, as long as it's being broadcast inside your state boundary, nothing they can do about it. And that's the only, and I was the, the only one that ever knew that. And uh, Bill Dugan got in trouble with the FCC because he had this little radio station down in Phoenix, which he called a pirate station. That was his number one mistake. See, if you call yourself a pirate, you're admitting you're a criminal. The definition of pirate in the law is a criminal. A criminal. A felon, in fact. So, never refer to yourself as any kind of a criminal. So, if you're in radio, you can't refer to yourself as a pirate radio station. Because if you do, you've confessed. It's a confession that you're committing a crime and that you're a criminal. You see, people didn't know these things. And when they got caught, they were arguing freedom of speech. Are the people on the airwaves? And all of these things that have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the argument. If you're broadcasting interstate and international commercial broadcasting, you are subject to the FCC because the Constitution gives them that authority and that jurisdiction. If you're not, they have no authority or jurisdiction over you whatsoever, no matter what you're broadcasting. All these amateurs who go get the license, they don't understand that they don't come under the jurisdiction of the FCC until they go get their license. And when they get their license, they are agreeing, they are agreeing, under a penalty of perjury, which is a felony, if they commit it, to abide by the rules of the FCC and be subject to their jurisdiction and to their rulings, fines, and uh, criminal prosecution. And you would be amazed at how proud they are that they have this license and how they crack down on people who know the law and, don't, and refuse to get a license. How they uh, persecute those people. And uh, they're the ones who are stupid. <laughs> it's like people everywhere, they're always pinging on me. Oh, he's a tax protester. Oh, he's a criminal because he didn't file 
and pay his income tax. So, whenever somebody says that within earshot of me, I said, I beg your pardon. And they say it again, or they say, oh, well, I didn't think you were listening. I didn't mean to, uh, I didn't mean to make you mad, Mr. Cooper. Well, you didn't make me mad. Uh, I, in fact, I find it very humorous that you would call me some kind of a criminal because I understand the law. You see, I know that this is criminal, what they're doing to the American people. Well, how can that be? Everybody files and pays their taxes. And I just asked them one, one question. Why? you got to see the look that comes over their face. What do you mean, why? Uh, just what I said. Why do you file and pay income taxes? And they can't give me an answer. Their answer goes something like this. Well, everybody else files and pays. Oh, really? Well, if everybody else was to go up on the, the interstate highway and lay down in the middle of the road, would you do it? Uh, no. Well, <laughs> uh, it's, it's so funny. Try it sometimes, folks. Just try it. Try to pin them down as to why they do it. They haven't got a clue. All these years, I've challenged everybody in this country. I've challenged the IRS, the Justice Department, the President of the United States, the local police chief, all the police officers in the state of Arizona, uh, the FBI. When the FBI agent came to me, I asked him the same thing. I, I said, do you file and pay any income tax? He says, yes, I'm a loyal American. I said, being a loyal American hasn't got anything to do with it. Why do you file and pay? Guess what, folks? <laughs> he got this dumb look on his face. He didn't know either. Nobody knows. I have never found anyone who knows. I have not found a CPA that knows. I went down and talked to the local CPA here. His name was Saunders. He's gone now. He moved out of the valley. But I asked him one day. I said, Mr. Saunders, why do you file and pay the income tax? You're a CPA. Your job is to give everybody advice on their income tax and fill out their forms for them and everything. I mean, you have to have a basis for requiring them to do that because you're charging them for this service. Guess what, folks? He couldn't tell me either. I told him to look it up and, and uh, give me a call. I gave him my phone number. Guess what, folks? He never called. Nobody ever does. And so I just ask him why. And then when they're standing there looking stupid... I tell them why I don't file and pay. And I ask them, don't you feel a little bit silly? See, I know what I'm doing. You haven't got the slightest clue. <laughs> i got to tell you, it's hilarious. It's really funny. I can't stand it sometimes. I just want to break out in this incredible laughter and roll around on the floor at the Safeway when, somebody, when I get in one of these conversations with somebody. It's incredible. Now let me ask you, the listening audience, all of you, right now, and uh, we're going to open the phones because this is my challenge to you tonight. Why do you file and pay the income tax? Now if you can't call me and give me your reason and cite the law that requires you to do it, You're going to look mighty stupid, not just to me sitting here in this studio, but to everybody in your house that's listening to this and know that I've just pinned you against the wall. You're pinned now. I've got you on the mat and you can't get up. The only one way you can get up is give me a call, cite the law that requires you to file and pay the income tax. I will listen to all your answers. I'm not going to argue with any of you. But after Christmas... I'm going to blow every single one of your arguments right out of the water because you never follow it through. Usually you cite something like such and such a statue, such and such a subparagraph. Those required to file are those required to pay. Our taxpayers must file this, this, and this by this, this, and this date. But you never look up the definition of taxpayer. You never follow it through to find the definition of those required to file, or those required to pay, or the definition of income. And for that, you have to go to Supreme Court rulings, who have absolutely ruled on the definition of income. And it's not anything that I get. No, sir. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. So, you know, I've just pinned you all against the wall. This, you know, the phone's going to be open to police chiefs. It's open to IRS agents, and a lot of you out there are police chiefs, police officers, IRS agents. I know the FBI is listening. 
you pack of miserable idiot cowards. You can't even tell me, and yet you go out and arrest people. I know the IRS agents are listening, and they can't do it. They couldn't even produce any document that gave them any authority. In the United States District Court, when I sued them. It's amazing. So the phone's going to be open to everybody. Preachers, moms, dads, police officers, police chiefs, FBI. Hell, the president can call if he thinks he knows the answer, and I'll bet he don't. Hey, Butcher Reno. Hey, Butcher of Waco, the burner of little children. Phone's going to be open to you too. Call me and tell me. I won't argue with any of you. I'll just write down your answers. And after Christmas, I will absolutely destroy every answer that you give me. What do you want to bet nobody calls to cite any law? Now, I know that millions of people listen to this broadcast every night. Out of all of those millions, you'd think one of them would be able to justify filing and paying the income tax. Guess what, folks? I'll bet you nobody does. So, because of that, we'll also let you talk about whatever subject you want, just to give you a little out and allow the phone to ring. Because if I don't do this, the phone will never ring. <laughs> you all know that, don't you? You see, because we've done this before. Absolutely amazing. A nation, a world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who have no intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. This is them. This is them. This is their mentality. That's enough of that. I can't stand it. <laughs> I don't know how anybody could stand it. I remember when I was a disc jockey and radio teen in Japan, uh, playing that as a dedication to a friend of mine whose name was Keith Redman. And... Uh, some girl had called in and wanted me to dedicate that song to him. He almost tore the door off the studio trying to get in to break the record. He considered it to be the greatest insult that had ever been paid to him because he was a thinker. <laughs> he was uh, an independent, free-thinking individual if I ever saw one in my entire life, and he was a teenager. So that's why I did that tonight. I remembered that little incident. Well, the phones are open and it's not ringing, and I know most of you know the number, 520-333-4578. So that's my challenge. And uh, that's it. You know, if nobody can do it, you know what it means. You know what it means, folks? We have a nation of stupid idiots who are also cowards. A nation of stupid idiot cowards who every April the 15th, do something for no reason at all other than that they are scared to death not to. And yeah, I'm talking to all you government people too, and all you IRS agents, and all you FBI agents, and all you police officers and police chiefs, all of you who go around persecuting other people who have finally figured this out and absolutely refuse to file and pay. Like me. I'll never file, and I'll never pay until you prove it to me that I'm required to in the law, and you can't do that. I've already checked. I challenged everybody in the world. I sued the IRS to try to find out their authority to even ask me to do it, and they couldn't produce anything. <laughs> so, rather than bow to tyranny, I'd rather die on my doorstep in defense of my rights. And in doing this, in taking this stance, I may be the only free man in this country. The only free man... You see, I'm free. I am totally, 100% free. Not afraid of anybody. And if they do come up here and kill me because of the stance that I've taken, I'll be even freer than I ever was before. And I'll get to solve the greatest mystery of all humankind. Is there really a God? Am I right in believing in Jesus as my Savior? I'll find out, won't I? <laughs> and 
And I'll be free anyway, no matter what. I'll be free. Because right now, my soul is imprisoned in this body here. And I've got to, you know, complete whatever it is I'm supposed to do here on this earth. And then uh, when I die, I get to be liberated from this prison that I'm in. My body will go into the ground. My soul will go off somewhere into the universe. To a place that I believe is called heaven. Well, the phone's not ringing. Isn't this incredible? Out of all the millions of people that are listening to this broadcast, you'd think that one would know why they file and pay the income tax. Now, you know, this goes against the primary nature of all human beings in that they don't give away their money unless there's a good reason to do it. And they're really required to do it. The phone is now ringing. Let's see what, what this person has to say. Good evening. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Cooper. Hello. Uh, before you die on your doorstep in defense of your life. Well, it won't be in defense of my life. It'll be in defense of my rights. I don't give a damn about my life. I care about my rights. I care about my spirituality. I care about my ethics, my honor. Okay. Me too. Good. Um, you get PBS out there in Arizona? I have no idea. I very seldom listen to radio. I'm too busy working. Well, this is um, uh, public TV. There's a program that they've been running here in the Northeast on public television. And it's, uh, it's a concert. Now, I've been unable to find where this concert was held. But it's a concert of a dozen or so old 1950s doo-wop groups. Yeah. And I know you like doo-wop music. Well, I love it. It's the Crest. It's the Cadillacs. It's Speedo. Flash Cadillac. Gene, Gene Chandler. Uh, it's, it's, it is the greatest 1950s revival concert you will ever see in your life. Okay, so what's the point? Well, the point, well, you, you like the old music. I thought that you'd be interested in knowing. Oh, it's oh, yeah. It's I thought broadcast all over the country. I thought you were going to get around to something about taxes. Well, you said we could call <laughs> up and talk about other subjects. Oh, yeah, but you should have clarified that. I was waiting for you to correct well, this in some way, <laughs> some way to the income. So you can't answer the question. I called up. To clue you in on this great PBS, I understand that and I appreciate it. But yeah. I'm just asking you: Can you answer the question? Why I pay income tax? Yeah. Why you personally file and pay income tax? Well, it's the law. What law? Well, you don't tell me it's the law unless you can cite the law. You're, you're, you're just coming off your head with a bunch of bullshit there. You don't know if it's the law or not. Well, how are we going to fund a military? How are you going to what? How are we going to fund a military? That's not our problem. That's the problem of the government, and it, their problem is to do it lawfully, not steal money from us unconstitutionally and against the law. Well, Bill, how are we going to have a police department fire department? I don't give a damn how they do it, but they must do it legally. Can't yeah, you get well, that through your head? Gee, how am I going to feed my family? Maybe I should go over and stick a gun up your butt and take everything you own. How about that? And if you say no, well, then I'm going to say, well, how, how am I going to feed my family, man? Well, see, their job, their, their job is to do it lawfully, constitutionally within the law. Well, wasn't this, you know, I have my copy of the Constitution here, not handy, but uh, wasn't there an amendment that, uh, uh, was it the 16th Amendment? I'm not sure now. Was it? I don't recall. I don't have my Constitution handy. But, uh, well, see, but my whole point is you don't know, and you're still filing and paying. If you really knew, and you could give me the answer, then I would go file and pay if I could check it out and make sure that you were right. But what is the answer, then? The answer is there is no such law that requires any of us that live within the territorial boundary of any state to file and pay the income tax unless we're engaged in certain excisable activities such as the importation and sale of drugs and alcohol, windfall profits from offshore oil wells, banking and insurance, and participating in government activities. Government employers, uh, excuse me, employees, are subject to the income tax under the law. I'm really not familiar.
familiar with this. I'm not an attorney. I'm not... Uh, well, I'm not accusing you of being. What I'm trying to do is get the point across to you. If you, well, don't, know, just, if you don't know why you're filing and paying, if you can't cite it to yourself and prove it in the law, why are you doing it? Because I think it's the right thing to do. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. Why is it the right thing to do if it's not lawful? That's your assumption that it's not lawful. No, it's not my assumption. Hey, Bill. I prove it every night here. Bill. Show me the law. Bill. Show me the law. There are thousands of attorneys all over this country. And not one single one of them can show me the law. And why is that? Why don't you ask them? Well. I already have. They can't do it. Neither can the IRS. In fact, why don't you call the IRS tomorrow instead of being the bigot that you're proving to be tonight and ask them to give you the law? Yeah, your, opinion, your, your attitude right now is bigoted. The, this the definition well, I, of bigotry. You're, you're demonstrating it here. I call to clue you into one of the greatest 1950s rock and roll revivals I've ever seen on TV. I understand, and I thank you for that. And if you happen to see it, it is the most inspiring, wonderful program. I'm, uh, I don't know if you're over 50 or not. I am. Yes, I am. I'm 55. I don't look it, but I'm 55. And I sat here for two hours and I watched this program, and I felt like I was 16 again. It was the greatest 50s rock and roll show I'd ever seen. Well, that's probably what the effect would be on me. <laughs> and I, I, would en I would enjoy it thoroughly. Absolutely. They had one group on there called the Jive Five. Yeah. They were five, five black gentlemen, uh -huh. and they were probably in their middle 60s. And honest to God, they sounded as good as they did back in 1957. Uh -huh. They were wonderful. Well, great. I'll Just look, great. I'll look, I'll look for it, see if I can find it. Okay, Bill. Thanks for calling. Thanks very much, sir. You're welcome. Oh, gee. <clears throat> well, you know, stuck to my promise. I didn't argue with his... Uh, with his answer, because he didn't have one. I had to argue with him about the reason that he couldn't give an answer, and he thought we're supposed to pay. <laughs> Can you believe it? Everybody, now make sure you, uh, you know, tomorrow the government is going to say that uh, you have to cut away half of your house and give it to the government because uh, they need to uh, build a ship. Are you going to do it? Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Cooper. This is Kevin Franz calling from Northwest Indiana. Hi, Kevin. Uh, I just wanted to um, give you the definition of a taxpayer. Okay, go ahead. Okay, first, a taxpayer uh, can only be a revenue agent and must be a Puerto Rican revenue agent who has collected excise taxes from businesses doing uh, import-export out of Puerto Rico. And after he has collected those taxes, he then fills out a return for those taxes and gives it to his uh, superior and thus becomes a taxpayer. You're absolutely correct. That is the definition of the taxpayer in Title 26, United States Code. And also, sir, I want you to know that um, ever since 1994, I heard a program with you and Wayne Benson. Uh huh. I have uh, I have stopped also, and will never again. And also, after attending the first uh, group uh, that we you had up at the ranch uh, a couple three years ago. Uh, I have. I came home and I built a FM radio station and I broadcast 93.5 FM stereo in all of Northwest Indiana. And I play that tape of you and Wayne Benson exposing the IRS as trust fund number 62. And all the people here in Northwest Indiana know this information. Good for you. And thank you very much and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to you too. You know now you can carry the hour of the time if you have a computer. You can take it live off the Internet without any distortion or interruption or anything. Yes, well, sir, I'm, I'm rebroadcasting this right at the moment off of WBCQ. I do it every evening, and uh, no matter, pretty much no matter what the propagation, um, but I do have a computer, and I will be working on that, getting a better signal for my audience. Great. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. And you were right on. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Yeah, folks, that's the definition of a taxpayer. The taxpayer is a United States revenue officer who collects taxes on excises from businesses and files a return. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, good evening, Mr. Cooper. Yes. It's Bill in North Carolina. Hi. This is one of my favorite subjects. I don't pay that stinking tax. Good for you. Do you file? <laughs> do you file? Um, I file zero. Just a kind of a slap in the face. Why do you file, though? Because you're not required to file. 
if you file and sign your name, you're swearing under penalty of perjury that you are a taxpayer. Well, you do certain things um, on the form. You put on there you're not filing it voluntarily, so they shouldn't be able to use it against you in any courtroom. Because they say it's mandatory. mandatory. Well, it is mandatory if you're a taxpayer. And if you sign that, if you if you notice down there where it says signature of taxpayer, yeah. and it's sworn under penalty of perjury. So if you sign it, you're saying you're a taxpayer, and a taxpayer is required to file. Well, I, I attach the Supreme Court rulings to it that say it's a, that it is a corporate profit. Guess, guess what? I have no income. Guess what? The only document that the IRS was able to produce in court when I sued them to prove that I was a taxpayer was an old tax return that I had signed. Is that right? Yep, and they used my signature in the taxpayer block to prove that I was a taxpayer. <laughs> yeah. And not file. Because, you know, either, either way, they're going to try to come after you. They send me letters and stuff, but, they, you know, they won't give me an audit. They won't let me come in there. What you do is you put a line through the word taxpayer mm -hmm. and initial it. Hmm. That's the way to do it there. That's the way to do it. I'll tell you what, man. These, these guys are, are just absolute criminals <laughs> where they're ripping people off. They are. They're criminals. They're crooks. And, and, uh, and I'll tell you something. I just really can't understand the uh, the ignorance and the bigotry and the stupidity of the American people on this subject. They are scared to death. They're like lemmings walking over the cliff. No, they're scared. They can't find any justifiable reason to do it, and they still do it because they're scared. When Americans are that afraid of their own government, mm -hmm. got news for you, it's all over. That's, that's the absolute truth. You know, the, I've, I've sat down and shown people that the word income never appears in the Internal Revenue Code. How can you have an income tax if there's no, no definition of it? That's right. There was a recent uh, a court case out, I think it was in Nevada, that Irwin Schiff was talking about, where they went in and used the, uh, the dictionary definition of the word income. And then when the man brought up the term voluntary, they used some of the, uh, for instance, Circular E, the taxpayer's um, guide that the employer uses. Uh -huh. They never used any law whatsoever to prove their case. That's right. They just went through, you know, and just, it was a sham. It's yeah. a star chamber. And the jury doesn't know any better. No. And the judge tells the jury <laughs> what to do. And that's against the law. The jury is an autonomous body unto itself, and nobody can tell them what to do. Well, I'll tell you, my, my battery's telling me it's low on the phone. I don't want it to sound like I've hung up on you. Okay. Up. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Yeah, and uh, by the way, um, if you have a moment to comment on this, um, they had a recent court case where they had a jury of 13. It was 11 standard jurors and one juror that couldn't speak English who had a translator. Had you heard about that? No. Well, I don't, I'd like to hear your comments. On but a jury, doesn't have, a jury doesn't have to be just 12 people. Oh, I understand that, but I'm saying... A jury can be 24 people. Yeah, what I'm saying, though, is that the fact that this person could not speak English, they had no way to translate the language without someone being there. How can they get the nuances of what's happening in that courtroom? I have no idea. <laughs> Bizarre. Anyway, thanks. You're welcome. Take care. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. <laughs> Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. <laughs> this amazes me. You know, you think out of millions of people, somebody could call and give me the answer. Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, my name is Emily. Hi, Emily. How are you? Good. I know who you are. Um, I think that people don't. I think people file because they're scared. Oh, I think you're right. How old are you, Emily? Eleven. Boy, you're sure a smart little girl. Maybe I should say you're a smart big girl. I used to I used to say, oh, look what little Allison did. And boy, she would look at me with a spark in her eye and she'd say, I'm big. <laughs> and so I started calling her Big Allison. Well, is there anything else you want to add, Emily? No. How's your dad? He's good. Wonderful. Haven't heard from him in a long time. You all right? You got a cold? I have a little sniff. Yeah, I can hear it. Okay, well, thanks for your call. Thank you. Bye. And Merry Christmas. You too. Bye-bye. Emily lives way out on the East Coast. 520-333-4578.
Good evening, you're on the air. Hello. Goodbye. I don't know what that was. Sounded like the 4th of July to me. Sounded like one of those things you light and it spins around and whistles. Maybe that's what it was. 520-333-4578. Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, Mr. Cooper, I was listening to you last night, and you were going to share with us uh, what event was going on today with the occult, I believe. Oh, we already did it last night. People called in and... and uh, I guess I didn't catch it. Yeah. I got some disturbance over the air. And yeah, you must, you must have missed it. What was it? Well, the, the moon is at its uh, closest point to the Earth right, right now. It's also full moon. It's also the winter solstice. Yep. It's also the perihelion point for the Earth, which is the closest point to the sun. According to the documentation that I have uh, been receiving from a lot, of, lots and lots of people, I checked with uh, Sky and Telescope magazine and was able to verify uh, the moon uh, being uh, closest to the Earth. Full moon, of course, you can go out and look at it. And, uh, of course, we all know that this is the winter solstice. Haven't been able to verify the perihelion yet. Someone had mentioned that to me uh, today, but uh, they couldn't verify it. And um, I thought maybe there was uh, some occultic significance to all of this. Yeah, there is. And, and, you know, Sky and Telescope Magazine and the astronomers said that the moon would not be any bigger than it normally is. And i got to beg to differ with that. Before I came in to do the broadcast, I went out and looked at the full moon. It looks bigger to me. It looks a lot bigger than uh, uh, I mean, last night. Yeah, it's not, it's not really, uh, well, that's because it's all the way full. But it's, it's not physically bigger. It's just closer, and so it might be psychological because I know that it's closer. Maybe it just looks bigger. But it does look like it's bigger to me than a normal full moon. Do they uh, give it a distance in, in that matter? Uh, yeah, and uh, I don't have it here in front of me, but yeah, it's they, they do. It, it has been closer to the Earth before. But the, the, the real significant point to all of this is all of these things occurring within one 24-hour period. Mm-hmm. It just never happens. That's very interesting. And I guess why we pay income taxes is just as a, as a tribute to our slavery in this country today. Well, you're an honest man. That... Uh, Unlike the person who called before who who chose to be a bigot, you're, you're at least an honest man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm filing away at my uh, my chains here. Good for little you. Little by little, and you've been a great help to that. Yeah, set yourself free. Yeah. Set yeah. yourself I'm free. I'm working on it. Um, I want to wish you and your family a uh, happy new year, a safe one. Thank you. And um, what else did I want to ask you? Uh, I was just uh, thinking about that uh, Megiddo stuff from the FBI and, uh-huh. and uh, channel surfing here the last couple yeah. of days. I've, I've seen a lot of programming, you know. I, I sincerely believe that that whole thing was written by the ADL and given to the FBI. And being, oh, well, it was on the ADL. Being, being, the lazy, being the lazy bureaucrats that they are, they just rubber stamped it and sent it out. Well, I, I even think that that, uh, that site that the FBI has is, is, is uh, maybe a managed site. They may pay somebody, like a PR company in New York or, or whatever, and, and uh, they've got... Like, like maybe gray advertising? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, couldn't it, I mean, that's not so far-fetched. Gray advertising is a proprietary corporation owned by the CIA. <laughs> oh, it is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that probably... If we if we look in there a little bit more, we might find out. Maybe that might be some homework to do. <laughs> to find out. Uh, oh, it's it's already been researched and revealed by many of us. And over again, the years. what is the name of the company? Gray Advertising. Gray Advertising. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, they're behind a lot of the propaganda that's thrown at the American people. Listen, I'm going to let somebody else get in yes, here. Sir. Thanks a lot for your call. Bye bye. Thanks for your honesty. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. By the way, I want to wish everybody very happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. If, 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 if there's any other holidays going on, happy to you too, and uh, happy New Year to everybody. It's a real important uh, event. New Year's is to uh, to some cultures, the Chinese. It's a tremendous event. In fact, most Asians. So I want to wish you all a happy New Year also. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, good evening, Bill. How are you? Fine. Tom from North Carolina. Hi, Tom. Uh, I haven't talked to you in a while, 
I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. And tell you why the iPad. <coughs> okay. Because I'm an idiot and um, too scared to fight these people and don't have the money to do it with. Well, if you're willing to admit that, that you're not an idiot. The idiot is the person who doesn't know why and won't admit that they're doing it because they're afraid. And uh, and uh, you know, says things like, well, how would they pay the military? Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. I also have your tape of uh, Wayne Benson from about four or five years ago. Good. About that, and it's really interesting. I think everybody, you should replay that sometime. Um happened to have an encounter with a Secret Service agent last night in Charlotte. Oh, really? And um, What did he have to say? I uh, work in a place where he came in to buy something. Uh-huh. And he had a T-shirt and a ball cap on. And I said, hey, do you really work for them? He said, yeah, out at the airport. And I said, what is this, part of this Millennium thing? And he said, no. He said, we have an office in Charlotte. And I said, well, tell me something. I said, who pays you guys? He said, what do you mean? I said, where did your paycheck come from? What's on it? And he said, the Treasury Department. I said, oh, so you're not actually an officer of the federal government. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, if you research the Treaty of Bretton Woods, you'll find that the Treasury Department is paid from the International Monetary Fund, which under the Treaty of Bretton Woods is a branch of the United Nations. That's absolutely that's uh, absolutely correct. He should be paid by the Treasury of the United States. <clears throat> but he said it was the Treasury Department. Yeah, he is paid by the Treasury Department. In fact, it's not the Treasury Department. It's the Department of the Treasury. Mm-hmm. And also, there's something about, I forget which code it is, but or which section it is, but sections 10 through 99 is blank. Yeah. Supposedly, as to what they do. Well, or who they are. And I said, as far as I know, you guys are just a bunch of guns around the president with guns. I said, we don't know whether you're keeping him in line or protecting him. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't like that at all. Well, I bet he didn't. But he, he, <laughs> he looked like an ex-Navy SEAL. He knows, he, it's, he, 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 knows it's the, he knows it's the truth. But anyway, I uh, had an encounter with the Department of Motor Vehicles in North Carolina with a copy of the Privacy Act in my hand and then wanting my Social Security number to renew my driver's license. Yeah. Well, do you realize the federal statute has been passed that allows states to require that before they can issue a driver's license now? The federal government has nothing to do with what states do. And the states can't pass one law saying that you can't demand anyone to produce it and then pass another one saying that you can Privacy Act states, and you know, you know what it states. Yeah, I do. States that unless there's a federal statute in place, or the law was in effect before January first, nineteen seventy-five. Yeah. I, I don't have it in front of me, but anyway, I got a senator involved in it, and I got back some really interesting information, and this comes from forty-two U.S.C. that little double S thing, whatever it means. And the number of the statute is 666, parentheses, A13. And it says, recording of Social Security numbers in certain family matters, procedures requiring that Social Security number of any applicant for professional license, commercial driver's license, occupational license, recreational license, or marriage license be recorded on the application. So they have enacted a federal statute. But a drive, uh, marriage license is not required to get married. Well, that's true. Sir. A driver's license is not required unless you're engaged in interstate commerce. <clears throat> but See, these are all thing. federal things. The federal government can ask for these things. Mm-hmm. State people can't. Well, after the stink I made at the DMV, I'm going to have to go to Guam to get my driver's license renewed. No, they can't withhold your driver's license because you, you cited the law to them and refused to give your, your Social Security number. What you have to do is sue them. Well, a fellow here tried that, and he got it all the way to the state court. And he said he was doing it for religious reasons because of the number of that. That's statute. the wrong reason. The and reason to do it is to quote the Social Security. He lost because he wasn't take, he didn't take it for the right reasons. Oh, okay. You have to use the law. 
the law is, the Social Security law itself says that the Social Security number cannot be used for identification. It right. says it right on your Social Security card. Yes, I realize that. And the Privacy Act says that nobody except the Social Security organization can demand that you tell them your Social Security number. That is absolutely correct. Well, you have to sue them, but you have to sue them for the right reasons. It's like somebody getting nabbed by the FAA for having a radio station and going into court and their defense is freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying, but no, I don't. really didn't get anywhere with it. Well, you didn't get anywhere because you didn't sue them. Well, they have the and, and, and what you have to do is, is, is do not sue the driver's license issuing agency. Sue the individuals that demanded that you produce a Social Security number. Okay, I pulled a pocket tape recorder out and sat it on the desk and asked the lady to um, state her full name. Yeah. And they got really upset about that. Why? And They're public servants. They have, to, recorder on. they have to identify themselves. They're public servants. They wouldn't do it. The and law they, says they... they two guys in with guns. The law says they must do it. You've got all kinds of stuff on these people. This, this was so hilarious. quit talking about it on the radio and take them to court. But, um... You're, you're, not, gonna, you're not going to do it. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You're not going to do it, are you? Um, you're not going to take them to court, are you? I haven't thus far. Yeah, but you're not. I can hear it in your voice. You're not going to. You're, you're ducking the issue like it was poison. Well... You're probably right. Well, then you've got nothing to complain about. You have no complaint whatsoever. You have <laughs> given them whatever rights you feel that you had. You don't have them anymore. You see, the, the basis of the law is that you must defend your rights or you don't have any. Okay. Okay? That's, I did research. That's the very foundation of the common law. At that time, and could not find anyone that was willing to take the case. You have to take the case. I've said it a million times on this radio show. You must go into court... Representing yourself. If you don't, you've declared yourself legally incompetent and your lawyer becomes your guardian for the state. The lawyer is an officer of the court. His interest is in pleasing that judge and keeping his bar membership, not in doing anything for you. Okay. Okay? Interesting. If you can't represent yourself, you can't claim your rights. That's the law. What is your website address? Can you give that out to Which, us? WilliamCooper.net. W. Cooper. Uh, WilliamCooper.net. Yeah, WilliamCooper.net. Got to let you go. Okay, bud. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Folks, if you're not willing to stand up and proclaim your rights, number one, you must claim them, and then number two, you must protect them. If you're not willing to do that, you have no complaint about anything, especially with me. I've put my life on the line. So, yeah, I'm not willing to listen to those kind of complaints. Good evening. You're on the air. God bless you, Bill. Thank you. My brother, in the blood. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. We're hanging there, buddy. We're, we're taking the court here in Milwaukee. We're suing them. Good for you. To get my gun rights back. Good for you. God bless you, brother. Thank you. And I'm hanging with you. And if anybody hurts you, they hurt me. Okay. And I'm coming after him. Well, good God you. bless you. God bless you too. That's the way. It, that's the way it should be, folks. That's the way it should be. Well, let's see who else we got here. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. Nobody's answered the question yet. I mean, there've been some honest people who have admitted that they're doing it just because they're afraid. We've had one person who's taken a, a bigoted a bigoted position and uh, <laughs> got very defensive because he didn't want to admit that he was filing and paying because he's afraid. He's not filing and paying because they have to pay the military. <laughs> Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, Mr. Cooper. I, uh, I am under the understanding that uh, federal retirees such as retired military, civil service, are required to pay the income tax. Yes, federal government employees are required in the law to file and pay the income tax. Absolutely. And that includes military retirees. Yes, they're, they're federal employees. Absolutely. And as to my knowledge, those are the only people who are required. No, they're not the only people that are required. 
Okay, I'll listen uh, further. Thanks a lot. <laughs> there are there are other people that are required. Anybody who participates in windfall profit from an offshore oil well is required. Anybody who is uh, owns an insurance business or a bank or a government. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate the education. Okay. <laughs> Anybody who is engaged in the importation and sale of drugs and alcohol. Anybody who's engaged in the importation and sale um, uh, in interstate or international commerce of firearms. You see, you can set up a firearms factory in your state. In your state. You can manufacture firearms, and as long as you only sell them in your state, they don't have any power over you whatsoever. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. How you doing? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, uh... I'm a federal employee. Yes, I sir. work for the Postal Service. Uh -huh. Is there anything I can do to uh, get out of paying the income tax? No. You're, you're an, I'm kind of stuck. That's what I kind of figured. You're an employee of the federal government. So, therefore, I pretty much give up my rights to that, I guess. Now, there was a point, and, and um, I researched this one time, but all of that stuff is in boxes in the, in the uh, thing, and I haven't been paying too much attention. There was a point where the federal government... Uh, made the post office a separate private corporation or organization, uh -huh. and there might be some loophole there. But if yeah, maybe if, I could do some research on that. If you're really being paid by the federal government, you don't have any chance. Yeah, can't. Uh, don't. I guess can't uh, hurt the, the the mouth that feeds you. I guess. Well, it's 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 the law. But yeah. if, if you were to quit working for the federal government, yeah, it'd be different then. Be different. Yeah. Okay, I I have another comment. Sure. Uh, I don't know if you got our flyer. Over October 21st, you, or October 25th of this year, UN Day, we had our blue beret shoot. No, I never. Um, never oh, you didn't receive that? Maybe never, got intercepted in the mail. Never got it. But uh, this is our second one we had. Uh, we had about 100 Patriots show up. We shoot uh, blue milk jugs, some targets, and then we culminate the activity with the burning of a UN flag and the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Absolutely wonderful. And can I say hi to a couple people? Sure. I'd like to say hi to, hi to Mike and Carol. Merry Christmas. And I pray for you and your family every day, Bill. Thank you very much. You're I welcome. I appreciate that. You take care. Thank you for calling. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. 520-333-4578. And there's a, there's a few more that are required to file and pay. Anybody who, uh, who um, has a business of wagering, if your business is gambling, you're required to file and pay the income tax. Now, if you just go to Las Vegas on a vacation and uh, you gamble just as entertainment or, you know, uh, enjoyment or as a hobby or whatever, that's not subject to the income tax. I don't care whether you win or lose. Good evening. You're on the air. Only if you're involved in the business of wagering. Good Sorry. evening, Bill. Go ahead. Say, you said that uh, when you were uh, doing your court issue um, that the produced a uh, return with your signature, correct? Yeah, from when I used to file and pay, when I was a dummy. Oh, okay. When I was stupid, before I uh, got my uh, my brains back. Well, i got a question. And someone else might have some information that would help with this also. If, a, if what your name was extracted from you and uh, it was done under threat or duress or coercion or a the big one uh, called fraud. Is it a signature? No. Exactly. No. No signature. No contract. No deed is lawful or, or binding if it's done under threat, uh, duress, or coercion. That's why. Listen to me. One of the best things you can do when you uh, are on the road and you get a traffic ticket, make sure that you have witnesses in the car, at least two witnesses besides yourself, and when he hands you the ticket to sign, ask the officer. Say, officer, what happens if I refuse to sign this ticket? He's going to say, well, then I have to arrest you and take you to jail. Say, thank you, officer. Notice that I have two witnesses to your statement here. I'm going to sign the ticket under threat, duress, and coercion. And I'm going to write that on the ticket because you've told me that if I don't sign, uh, you're going to take me to jail. And that nullifies the contract. The judge will throw the ticket out. That's or at least the judge is supposed to throw the ticket out. It's happened. He's, the judge has always thrown it out whenever this has happened, uh, whenever I've seen it done. Well, uh, 
<laughs> I could disagree with that, but uh, I have my reasons for that. It uh, depends, I think, maybe on where you live and how corrupt these. Uh, no, no, but no. The law says that it's it's no good if that if that happens. Well, I've had and the that. judge is supposed to throw it out. Yeah. Now, whether the judge does or not, that's an entirely different matter, and then you have to appeal it. If you're not willing to appeal it, then you deserve what happens to you. Well, I, I agree with that. Because but, anything know. done in a threat door, uh, dress or coercion is 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 no good. It's not a binding contract. Your signature on that traffic ticket is what binds you to the fine and to the to whatever follows. Well, okay. Well, listen, you have a have a have a nice winter solstice and uh, <laughs> bail day. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thanks for calling. There's another one, too. I uh, researched the Constitution. This was in another state. I researched the, the law for municipalities. I got a ticket in a city, which is a municipality. And I went to court and challenged the ticket on the grounds that it was a tax on speed and that a municipality does not have the constitutional authority to enact a tax. And the judge made me sit down until all the other cases were handled and the court was empty, and then she uh, threw my case out. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. Um, this is Dave from Ohio. Hi, Dave. Um, I have a, maybe a roundabout question I've wondered about many times when I've heard um, discussion of uh, who really is uh, liable for the income tax, and I've heard the term of government employees. Yes. And I guess I'm wondering, I was a government employee, but I was an employee of the state of Ohio, not a federal employee. And my uh, paycheck was always a warrant on the general fund of the state of Ohio. However, I know that uh, the department that I worked for was largely federally subsidized. In other words, it was... Uh, a state department, but it was largely... Um, that, that doesn't make any difference in your case. What that's makes what a, I was wondering if there was any kind of an indirect kind of thing there. There is an indirect kind of thing, but it has nothing to do with that. The indirect kind of thing is an agreement made between your state and the federal government to participate in the income tax scheme, making state em, uh, government employees subject to file and pay the income tax. It's unconstitutional, but that's what they've done. And so, so go to your state under the Freedom of Information Act and ask for all agreements made between the state and the federal government concerning income tax. Very good. I certainly will. And then you'll find out. And you'll get a document that is the document that, that, uh, that binds the state to the, to the federal government with the state income tax, and you'll see that they won't give you part of it. Part of it is redacted, and they won't give it to you. And what's interesting, too, um, indicating what you're saying or, you know, suggesting that, is that when you file the state income tax, the whole thing is based upon the federal tax. Absol in absolutely. In fact, the st all the states who participate in the income tax scheme have just tagged themselves on to Title 26 United States Code. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. I'll certainly look into that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, that's it, folks. Good night. God bless each and every single one of you. Good night, Annie, Pooh, and Allison. Uh, happy holidays to everybody. Tomorrow night will be a special Christmas broadcast because it will be our last broadcast for this week before Christmas. And then we'll see you next week. Gee, I'm sorry that nobody knew the answer to that question. Now, all you little lemmings and sheeple, make sure that you say, bah, if you're a sheep. And, you know, if you're a lemming, you don't have to say anything. Just... Just uh, just run right off the edge of the cliff when it comes time for you to do that on April the 15th of next year. Don't forget to file and pay your income tax. You stupid, cowardly, beasts of burden and stakes on the table. You deserve it. You really do.